Guilty as charged. The babysitter in Honolulu who gave Benadryl to seven-month-old Abigail Lobish, which led to the baby's death, has been convicted of manslaughter by unanimous jury in Honolulu. Let's discuss. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County, a.k.a. the Florida lawman here on True Crime MTN. As you can see by my surroundings, I'm on the road, but the show must go on. Yes, I'm barring a friend's office, hence the background. But as far as this case, although we have not covered it yet on our channel, this has been a case that has attracted a lot of attention because in Honolulu you had this individual who held herself out to be a caretaker, a licensed babysitter, someone you drop off your kids to her home and she takes care of them for a fee. Well, she wasn't licensed at all. She wasn't licensed to be a caregiver for children and her secret apparently in helping a baby go to sleep when she had other kids around was to give that child Benadryl, but she gave Abigail Lobish too much and that led to her death. Now the defense was saying the mother was the one giving the child Tylenol PM and it was in the breast milk of the mother. And so that's where the chemical came into play that caused the baby's death. But the jury rejected that because the uh, the active ingredient in Benadryl was at such a high level that it w- could not have come merely from Tylenol PM through uh, baby uh, mother's milk. And also, if it was Tylenol PM, you would have had the presence of acetaminophen, and they didn't detect that. So that's why they said, hey, you were the last one with this baby. You are the one who we are convinced gave the baby Benadryl in such a high dosage, and you're not even licensed, guilty as charged. And according to a local newspaper in Honolulu, the Star Advertiser, an Oahu Circuit Court jury found babysitter Dixie Denise Villa guilty of manslaughter in the February 2019 death of seven-month-old Abigail Lobish. Manslaughter has a maximum sentence of 20 years. Villa was charged in July 2019 with manslaughter following an autopsy report that showed Lobish was found dead at Villa's Aliamanu Military Reservation home on February 24, 2019, died of diphenhydramine, a an his, antihistamine found in Benadryl toxicity. The defense argued that Lobish's mother and father, Villa's two older daughters, or a friend could have given the drug to the infant. Defense lawyer Megan Cow said the baby's mother, Anna Lobish, could have had the drug in her system from taking Tylenol PM and caused the fatal levels in her daughter with her breast milk. The state's case showed that Villa was home alone with Abigail Lobish, her two-year-old brother, Villa's own daughter and son, all under the age of five on the night of February 23, 2019. Deputy Prosecutor Tiffany Keo said she was the only one capable of administering the drug. K.O. said that Villa was overwhelmed with having to care for all the children and chose to pacify the children with iPads and the baby with that drug. And I apologize for the pronunciation, uh, Defenhydramine. K.O. said that she will file a motion for a mistrial because the deputy prosecutor told the court this morning that new evidence had come to light that Anna Lobish slept with her baby. Well, she can try to get a, a new trial, a mistrial, but... I don't think it's going to happen because according to the star advertiser, although co-sleeping was not raised as a cause of death, Kyle said that it was an issue if the prosecution withheld information and Lobish lied during her testimony. Also, Kyle said that the prosecution pointed out that it was irresponsible for Villa to sleep with baby Abigail next to her. Okay. Well, good luck with that. I mean, here's the deal. You had a jury who was horrified at the fact that a mother who drops off her child with this caregiver ends up being called that her child, her baby, doesn't make it, is dead. I mean, that is beyond horrific. And I think that any parent, 
on the uh, jury would have just felt that horror and empathy. And when the defense had the mother on the stand during cross-examination, the defense had a very difficult time trying to thread that needle between an effective cross-examination and not badgering this grieving mother. It's not a good look when you're attacking a mother, essentially accusing her of misleading the court, misleading law enforcement, when she just lost her baby to someone who was giving the baby Benadryl. And yes, you can deny and say it all just came from the mother. But again, as I said earlier, if it was Tyrone PM, the active ingredient would have been also joined by acetaminophen, which wasn't found. And the level of this drug, this toxic drug, could have only been given by someone who just directly gave them Benadryl, not coming through Tylenol PM through the mother's breast milk. Now, the mother has a civil lawsuit going against the defendant. And because of that, that complicates things. Prosecutors don't like to be used as leverage in a civil lawsuit. Plus, whenever there's a civil lawsuit with a different standard, which is just preponderance of the evidence as opposed to beyond a reasonable doubt, things could get complicated uh, because of the different standards, the depositions that can provide testimony, which says, aha, mother, you said this here, but you said something different here, and then that could create reasonable doubt in the criminal trial. So there was an issue where the mother was being accused by the defense as not being completely honest through her statements in the civil trial compared to what is happening or what happened in the criminal trial. So that's why prosecutors like to avoid having a conflict with the civil trial. I hope that does not mess a case up. It did not here because of the guilty verdict. I do not think the defense lawyer is going to succeed on this new evidence that they're claiming. Again, there's there's no evidence that the cause of death could have been because the baby slept next to the mother. And even if the prosecution pointed out that the baby should not have been sleeping next to the caregiver in the caregiver's bed, the cause of death was the toxicity of the Benadryl, not the co-sleeping arrangement. The defense was able to raise enough questions during the trial to give the jurors some pause. After all, the jury deliberated for seven hours over three days. This was not a quick verdict. This was obviously not an easy one for this jury. But they ended up finding the defendant guilty of manslaughter, and now she can get up to 20 years in prison. And as far as the claim that the prosecution withheld important evidence from the defense, the the prosecution responded that, no, you got everything. You got in discovery. We see this a lot when the defense says, you didn't give me everything. Yeah, you had it. It is a go-to for defense lawyers after a guilty verdict to say, you should have given us more when the prosecution then shows the court, number one, that we did turn over the information to the defense. And number two, if there was part that wasn't turned over, it was not intentional. And if it had been turned over, it would not have made a difference. What's called harmless error in the case. So I don't think that uh, that claim by the defense is going to get a new trial. So I think this verdict will stand. We'll see what the judge gives the defendant as far as a penalty. That comes next, and we'll follow it here on True Crime MTN. It's a sad case, but one that at least the parents of little Abigail will have a measure of justice, but nothing can replace their loss. So thank you for watching. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, a.k.a. the Florida Lawman. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and share with a friend. Thank you for getting us over 67,000 subscribers. We appreciate your support. Leave a comment below. We love reading your comments, even when you disagree with us. And I'll see you next time.